Good evening. Welcome to St. Thomas the Apostles Church on Holy Thursday as we celebrate the beginning of the Sacred Triduum. Thank you for the gift of your presence this holy night. I invite you to please stand and we'll join together in singing our gathering hymn. It's hymn number 139, found in your breaking bread, Glory in the Cross. Wednesday, April 6th, Bishop Warfield celebrated the Chrism Mass with the priests and the people of the Billings Vicariate in St. Patrick's Co-Cathedral. At the liturgy, Bishop Warfield with the priest and laity of our diocese blessed the sacred oils that will be used throughout the year. Sarah and Jaden Gillette received the oils on behalf of our parish community. So behold the oil of the catechumens. The oil of the catechumens brought forth by Dunsell family, blessed by our bishop for the anointing of those preparing for baptism. Through this anointing, they are strengthened by Christ to resist the power of Satan and re reject evil in all its form as they prepare for the saving waters of baptism. The oil of the sick 
brought forth by Jerry and Connie Kaiser, was blessed by our bishop for the healing of body, mind, and soul. May the sick who are anointed with it experience the compassion of Christ and his life-saving love. The sacred chrism brought forward by Sarah and Jaden Gillette is a mixture of olive oil and balsam perfume consecrated by our, by our bishop and the priest of our diocese. It is used to anoint the infants at baptism, those who are to be confirmed, bishops and priests at their ordination, churches at the time of their dedication. your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. 
If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand, you shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the house where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and after he had given thanks, took bread, broke it, and said, This is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup, after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lord, Lord. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to hand him over. So during supper, fully aware that the father had put everything into his his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him, For this reason he said, not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightly so, for indeed I am. If I therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. And I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do the gospel, the good news of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Now this night is truly one of the greatest nights of the church year. And in most parishes, it doesn't attract the bigger crowds like Christmas Eve would, Easter Sunday, or even Ash Wednesday. Uh, my old friend, Father Robert Fox, when he was in uh, his parish not too far from mine in northeastern Montana, he was encouraging people to attend Mass on Holy Thursday. And his parishioners were complaining, saying he's trying to make Holy Thursday a holy day of obligation. And they chose not to attend. Well, it's a good bet, I think, that most people who make an effort to come to Mass on Holy Thursday, and that would be you, you're already committed in one form or another. It matters. That's why we're here together. This is an important night. So on this night, we get to the heart of the matter, what our faith is about. This is the night when Jesus sat in the upper room in Jerusalem at table. No one was present but his inner circle. And it would not be wrong for you to think of yourselves as part of that inner circle this evening. Not because you're worthier than others, but simply because of the mystery of God's plan, you are here. And this is the night of supreme love, the night the Son of God declares himself ready to lay down his life for you and for me. That makes us brothers and sisters on the deepest level. Each of us drawing near to each other as Jesus draws us close to himself. This is the night Jesus instituted the gift of the Eucharist, central to our faith. Everyone here tonight is your brother and sister. So the meaning of the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of God, is not a private experience between just me and God. No, it's a community founded in the blood of Christ. And all our ways of understanding human relationships are reordered based on the life of Jesus and his response and our encounter with him. Because Jesus embraced his cross, Jesus gave the supreme expression of his free offering of himself at the meal he shared with his 12 apostles. On the night at which he was betrayed, Jesus transformed this Passover meal or reinterpreted it with his apostles into the memorial of his voluntary offering of his own life to the Father for the salvation of us all. This is my body, which is given for you. This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus identifies himself with the bread shared and the wine poured out as a libation. The Eucharist that Jesus Christ instituted at this moment is the memorial for which we are called to gather each Sunday, uniting ourselves with the Lord Jesus and the community of faith in this meal of the new covenant. It is the gathering at which we remember in a most profound way by eating and drinking the body and blood of Christ who we are and who we are called to be as a Catholic community, as disciples of Jesus. And then just to make the point further of who we are called to be, at the end of the meal, Jesus bends low and performs an act of service, washing the feet of his apostles. In the act of identifying himself with the bread and the wine, and in this act of washing the feet of the apostles, Jesus teaches us that he, the one who has been sent from the very heart of God, has been sent to go to the lowest places. His life is food and drink for others. His very soul is self-emptying service. The Lord and Master, the one who is equal with God, does not deem equality with God something to be grasped at. Rather, instead, he becomes a slave of all, a servant of all. And he calls us, 
his disciples to know less. That's our identity. That's who we are called to be as a people grounded in Christ, as disciples of the Lord. You know, in the past years, and this year is no different, um, Pope Francis stunned many by washing the feet of men and women in a jail, and he even washed the feet of a Muslim woman. This year he went to another um, jail in Italy and washed the feet of some of the inmates. And over the years, the feet that have been washed by previous popes had been the feet of cardinals, bishops, and priests. But Pope Francis is making a point, and a good one, that the love of Jesus, the mercy of God, has no barriers. We ourselves are called to incarnate or enflesh that love of God so clearly revealed to us in his son Jesus. We too are called to reveal that type of love to others. And the gospel this evening concluded with Jesus saying, I have given you a model to follow so that as I have done for you, you should also do. Now we are gifted to be disciples of the Lord, to be committed Catholics, committed Christians. And I think so often we do not appreciate the depth of that gift we, we, we've been given. But when we choose to live in Christ, when we choose to, to disciple our lives after him, our story becomes a part of a much bigger story that changes everything. We're not closed in on ourselves. We're part of the bigger story of God, of Jesus. And this story is very clearly revealed to us in this sacred triduum, this holy three days commemorating the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus, which we begin celebrating in a special way this evening. And because we are able to enter into this truth, this reality, our lives are forever changed and for the better. At this time, I invite those who have been asked to have their feet washed to come forward and find a chair. And you can take off your shoes and your socks if you're wearing them. <laughs> During the washing of the feet, our song will be number 141, As I Have Done For You, number 141.
as we enter into the Passover of the Lord, let us intercede before God on behalf of all in the name of Jesus, our teacher and Lord. For the church, the household of faith redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, may we celebrate the stridium as a time of grace and new life. We pray to the Lord. For the world God loves so much that he gave his only Son. May all hear Jesus' command to put away their swords and cooperate for the good of one another in pursuing peace. We pray to the Lord. For those about to be baptized in Christ's Paschal mystery, may their washing in those saving waters give them a full share with Christ. We pray to the Lord. For our brothers who are priests, may they be strengthened and renewed by God's love, following the example of Jesus, the great high priest. Faithfully lead us in prayer, the pursuit of truth, and in offering service. We pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered in faith, may our joy and hope be in Christ, who loves his own world in who loves his own in this world, and who loves us to the end. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the sick, may the sacrament of anointing and our community's compassion bring them healing and strength, especially Dean Knudsen, John Murphy, Shannon Moulton, Jeremy Stilton, Margaret Helfrich, Tristan Voller, and Jean Grenstein. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have de departed this world to go to the Father, especially Tim Thielen, may they come to share fully in Christ's Paschal victory. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Noah Buller and Jack Payton, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With joy, O God of salvation, the assembly of your holy people begins the three-day Pasch, in which Christ manifests the gospel in his own flesh and blood. Stir our hearts by the example of this Savior, who welcomed to his table even those who would betray, deny, and desert him, the Lord who knew their weaknesses, yet bent down to wash their feet. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our preparation song is number 492, Where Charity and Love Prevail, number 492.
blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, that will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our and all the churches. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always.
behold, this is Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 333, Ponda Vida, number 333. <laughs> Number 342.
at this time I invite any Eucharistic ministers to the Giants this evening to please come forward. My dear friends, we send you forth to the sick and the homebound of our parish community, bearing the word of life and the body of Christ, together with the assurance of our love and concern. We pray that these gifts may strengthen our absent brothers and sisters and their communion with us through this journey of life to the Paschal Feast of the Kingdom. We ask this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy his banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Soon we will process with the Blessed Sacrament to the altar of repose, which is in the community center. And just as Christ went with the disciples to the Mount of Olives to pray before his sacred passion. So please be reverent during the procession, remaining silent and thus singing the song, which, and the song can be found, the song sheet can be found outside the community center entrance. And all are encouraged to come to the altar of repose in the community center and, and pray. And there will be a sign up sheet for adoration at the gym entrance. Uh, which will continue until 10.55 p.m. when we will celebrate night prayer. And all are welcome to return as desired for adoration or night prayer um, during the night. And during the procession, um, the uh, appropriate um, response, uh, the, the, uh, your appropriate response will be to kneel, okay? So, um, when, and when I incense 
the Blessed Sacrament um, as well. The posture is kneeling.